Hi everyone, it's Kate from The Fog and I am back this week to talk all things sewing bee. So we are on week three. It is whizzing by. Um, so before I get going, apologies. I sound very croaky and bunged up. I have got a really nasty cold and hay fever. So if um, I, I look like I'm crying, I'm not. It's just how I'm going to be. So yeah, feeling a little bit under the weather, but we're going to talk sewing bee, so that is pepping me up. So this week, theme was holiday, which I, the challenges felt more like reuse and upcycle, but anyway, holiday. Um, so the first challenge that they had was where they had tablecloths and they had to make them into a, quite a simple blouse. Um, there were quite a few seams on the top. Uh, I thought it was really lovely. I don't know about you guys, do you have... Um, because I've got some of my granny's tablecloths and I've got some old linen. I just can't, I can't bear to cut it up. Um, so yeah, I, anyway, I've got, I digress. And I also thought it was really sweet that Janet didn't use a second, a second thing because she didn't want her, um, she didn't want to waste, you know, cut another tablecloth without needing to, which I thought was probably how I would have done it as well. Um, anyway, I digress. So pattern wise for this, I thought this, Rachel, I thought was going to be really easy and actually it was really difficult. So it was a v-neck, um, it was sort of designed on a zero waist style um, item where everything is kind of squares and rectangles so that you kind of obviously waste less. Um, I had a look at some of zero waist patterns, I wasn't making this perfect, but I thought, we thought in terms of the shape and the feel of it, the Atelier duped Zoe blouse was probably the closest we could find with that sort of quite shallow V. Um, it's got it's got longer sleeves, actually a really lovely pattern, little simple darts, but we thought if you like that kind of easy breezy sort of blouse style and you're looking for something similar, that would definitely kind of tick the box. Not perfect, but it would definitely tick the box. Then the middle challenge, um, they had to, which looked really fun actually, they had loads of like paraphernalia from the seaside, so nets and ropes and, you know, uh, wet weather gear, and they had to make a bag out of it, which I loved this challenge and I thought they made really interesting stuff. And then last but not least, on their holiday week, they had um, to make a day outfit based on the French Riviera. So, um... I thought this was quite sweet when this came up um and they were talking about the challenge they were saying oh you know some people are going to make two garments probably to make a full outfit and I'm not gonna lie Rachel and I were like oh no so pretty much everyone made two items which means that we were looking for so many more patterns last night it was unbelievable but I think we've done quite well so I'm gonna get started first person was Alex she made a really great jumpsuit with very simple little like spaghetti straps um, and really exaggerated big sort of legs. As soon as I saw the shape, the straps are slightly different, but I was pretty sure that she based it with, on the Nina Lee Carmel jumpsuit. If I show you a picture, you can see it's got the same proportions um, and I think she just like thinned the straps. So I think... I'm pretty sure that one, well, I don't know, it's hard to know, isn't it? But I, that one felt pretty close. Um, if you, if I show you this version, you can see if she, that sort of, um, if she just made the straps a little thin and then it was pretty much spot on. Um, but proportion wise, I thought that was pretty close. So that was Alex. I'm sorry, my laptop is here because there are a lot and I'm very concerned I'm going to get muddled. So next up we have Elsa. Um, she made... It was really beautiful actually. Um, probably kind of the, the the item that I was most interested in. Um, almost a, like a swimming costume top um, and this very kind of simple round neck, which we thought the paper cut patterns Marnie swimsuit would be a perfect match for. I just thought it was absolutely like bang on. But the trousers were the thing that was an absolute triumph. So they were absolutely enormous the kind of bottoms with big pleats at the front and also a pleat at the back. We looked and looked and looked. I think she must have used something and then ch and changed it herself. And um, because we looked, but if anyone has got suggestions, do let us know. So it, 
So the pattern that I picked was the McCall's 7131. I picked, we picked this because it had the waistband and it had the pleats at the front, quite, quite big exaggerated pleats. It had the same style pocket. The difference was that it doesn't, it has elasticated at the back and doesn't have the pleat. So I am aware that it's not perfect, but quite close. Thoughts on a postcard, um, appropriate for holiday week. Yeah, if you've got any ideas, because we were a bit struggling with that one. So next up, we've got Don. He made a very simple um, kind of wide strapped top. The key detail on it is that it had princess seams. And then he made quite a simple pair of elasticated waist trousers without side seams. That was kind of the detail. So Rachel found these, I think she did really well actually. So the Vintage Vogue 9187, if I show you the line drawing, it's probably easiest to see. Um, it, the top is absolutely perfect. It's also got top stitching detail on it, which he had. So I thought this one felt really, really similar to what he'd made. And then the trousers, which I love that he makes for his wife and uh, is so sweet. Um, we thought that the Butterick 6851, um, these don't have side seams, they're very simple construction actually, so if you are looking for a pair of trousers like this, they're definitely worth having a look at, and the no side seam means it's one less thing to sew, so yeah, they're very, very simple, you can see the line drawing, just, but a kind of classic, classic piece. So then we have got Georgie. She made quite a simple outfit actually, I was a bit worried that she was going to be in trouble because it it, it felt quite simple, but I mean, obviously it was more complicated than it looked. So the, she had this very simple, like really nice um, little cami top, and then it was quite cropped. And then she had a kind of bias cut skirt, which obviously they ta that takes ages to get looking good. The fit of it, you know, French seams, cutting it out correctly, it's kind of, it looks quite simple once it's on, but it's hard to construct. So for the cam for the cami top, I thought the sofa at silk cami was really great. It's had a similar proportion to it. Um, slightly higher neckline. There are a few of these, but I thought this one felt kind of close-ish for the top. And then for the bottoms, we ha I had the Vicky So Sarti skirt, which obviously I've spoken about quite a bit because the these skirts just seem to be around each summer. So bias cut, kind of floaty, the, the length on it was right. So I thought that one was pretty, pretty close. Um, apologies again, if you can hear a toddler squawking, that is, that is this week. And yeah, so if you can hear someone shouting, it's my little boy having a nice time with his breakfast. So Janet is next. She made, and I don't think we, uh, this one, I don't think we got perfect. So I would love to hear I think she used a vintage pattern. It looked like a pair of pajamas, little shorts with this sort of um, wrap style blouse with a little button on the side. Um, I, I looked for ages and I couldn't find anything. The closest thing I could find was the itch to stitch pine cove pajamas because it had that detail where it, it goes over to one side, but that is tie, you tie it aside, it's not got a button. So I don't think that's quite right, but that would be a good starting point if you wanted to recreate it. But yeah, I think she's a vintage pattern. So if anyone has any suggestions, I am all ears. Next up, we have Lauren, who made this really amazing outfit, actually. I, I thought this was so great. So the top part of it was this sort of crossover kind of bandeau style, kind of almost like a bikini top. Then she had paired it with an insane pair of trousers that had this kind of, um, it was kind of cut flat round the top and then it had a kind of really wide leg pleated with slits up the side. It was very, they were, it was a really extra pair of trousers and she'd made it in quite a sheer fabric. I thought it was really great. So the top, we thought the Vicky So Silby top was really good for this. Um, absolutely perfect. I'm sure that is the right pattern. Then for the bottoms, the McCall's 8292. We thought this it had the same shape of um, kind of at the top of the trouser and then it was quite wide leg. She'd done pleats and this is more gathering, but I thought this was a really good option if you like that sort of style. It's pretty close. 
Again, any suggestions on which one she actually used, that would be great. They made a um, menswear outfit, which I thought was pretty bold, actually. It was a shirt and a pair of trousers, which was a lot to make in that amount of time. Um, I looked at all of the shirt patterns and I thought that the Simplicity 9758 was really close. It had that sort of vintage um, camp style collar. Um, the proportions of the collar felt quite similar to this one. So that one would be a really good option if you're looking for that style of shirt. Then for the trouser, I think they made the men's Elling trouser. Um, this is great because it actually looks like a kind of pair of proper men's trousers with a fly, but it's actually a fake fly and they're elasticated so you can pull them up. His did have a waistband, I don't know, this, but this one felt like a good option. Then we had Marcus. He made a, a kind of bandeau style um, top with um, a kind of quite full on skirt with kind of asymmetric seams there was a lot going on um top wise there are lots of free tutorials for this style of top where you have an elasticated kind of top bit there is also one that if you want something with a bit more structure the french poetry polaris top is very close it's got really lovely sleeve details and gathering around the um, shoulder so it's a really sweet pattern if you haven't seen it then for the skirt we struggled i have to say i don't know where he'd found that pattern we looked and looked and looked i thought that we thought that the vogue 1957 felt quite close it has it had a lot going on so it was quite extra which kind of ticked that box and it had the kind of um seams kind of running at different angles but um definitely not perfect for that one then we had pasha and she made this really cute little outfit. So the, she had this kind of little top with a twist detail at the neckline, sort of strapless, and then a pair of high-waisted sort of sailor-style trousers with wide leg. So top-wise, I thought the paper cut pattern's alto top would be perfect for this. It's got a seam down the centre front, which hers did, that twist, it felt really, really close. Then for the bottoms, we thought that the Birda 6573 was absolutely spot on. Um, it has the, it has loads of the same details and the buttons on it were just there for kind of ornamental buttons, which is, they don't kind of, you know, like the proper sailor ones that unbutton. It wasn't a pair of trousers like that. So I felt like these ones were really, really close. Then last but not least, we've got Susie. Now she, we, we really struggled with this one, I'm not going to lie. I hadn't seen anything like it and I knew it was going to be tricky. So I looked for something that had the cutout detail underneath the bust, that was a kind of my starting point. The pattern that I found that I think you could make work as a kind of, if you love this, is the So Love Patterns Jolie dress. So it's got the same strap details. It's got more of a sweetheart line than her, but you could change the neckline and curve it off but it has that little keyhole detail built in already, which you could then make a little bit bigger to kind of match her one. So that was kind of our option for her. Again, if you've got any suggestions, let me know. Right, that was it from us. I felt that was a very long video. Um, I hope you're still with us. There was a lot of patterns to get through. We will be back next week with another video. Have a lovely rest of your week. Bye.